In this lab, we're going to make a simple state machine that moves between five states based on some switch inputs. Um, so there's a state transition diagram, which is given in the lab handout. So let's look at the physical hardware. Here we're in state one, and we can see that when we set the switches to the proper state, which is zero one, um, it will transition to the next state. So there we see the transition, and then it waits. It now waits for the next required input, and then waits for the next required input. You can see other inputs won't cause the state transition. So here it's looking for 1-1, one, one, and anything except 1-1 one, one doesn't cause it. Once it's in this fifth state, it just stays in that state until we reset it. So we set reset high and low, um, and then you can transition through it again. So this is a really simple state machine. So let's look at how we actually do that with the physical hardware. Do is download the project file, um, and we have this project file set up to be different from any other one we've used so far uh, because now we're doing VHDL and not schematic entry. So I'm just going to delete these old ones. Um, so you just drag that file somewhere. I'll put it onto the desktop. Um, and you need to extract it all again. So we let the Windows extraction process occur. And then it's going to give you this folder. In the folder, we open up the XISE file, um, you know, very similar to before, except now it's set up to use VHDL. So we have the same environment, you can see, um, except instead of a schematic file, we have this VHD. So what you have to do is open that file, and you'll notice it's set up already um, to be partially complete. So we have the logic for we switch from state one to state two, from state two to, to state three. But the logic isn't actually here if you're dealing with state three, four, and five. Um, so what you need to do, for example, is copy this section and convert this to state three. So when state three, and then you have to set up when switch one, what's it supposed to be? So is it supposed to be zero one or one one? And you might need to change that. Um, and again, and then if that happens, we switch to state four. So you need to set up all that logic there. You need to set up the logic for the outputs. Again, we can say, for example, to add switch three, we just change this to when switch three. And you just need to set up all the LEDs for what the proper output should be. Um, so you need to, just like these previous ones, for example, set LED three to one for state three. Finally, here, you'll need to add additional states. So for example, we're gonna use state three, state four, um, and state five, so you add them there. Once you have all that done, um, just as before, we can, I'm just gonna save it, we run this synth this implement design process, which will give us a programming file. So if I run it now, it will actually fail. Um, if it fails, you can look through at what the errors are. So this is where you see problems with your code. So for example, I can hit the errors tab and see undefined symbol, S3. Um, so we can see, for example, this is occurring because I say change the state to S3, but I haven't defined S3 up here. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to change this to S2, or say S1, so it goes somewhere else. And again, you can run this process, and now it should complete. Um, you might have other errors. For example, if you forget the semicolon at the end, it'll give you errors, um, and you can go through and try to find those problems in your code. Once it's done, just like before, you'll get this generate programming file checkmark. Um, once that's complete, you'll run program.bat, and that'll program the board, and you can test it. So to test it, you go through each of the steps in the given state machine. So if I just run this, um, and again, you expect it to take a little bit of time to finish the programming. Um, if it ends right away, then check the board's probably not connected properly. Once that's done, you can go through and test it and see if it works. Once it works, uh, you have to do a basic lab report again, and you have to submit your VHDL code with this lab report to sort of show what you ended up implementing. So that's how we do lab seven. Again, I haven't showed you the full code here because part of the lab 
is for you to figure out what that code is. Um, and you should use as a reference the procedure you're given here, which has the state machine that you're expected to implement. Again, states S1 and S2 are already done, so you can use that as a reference for how everything compares to this state transition table.